that makes it real easy to see the uh, change in the angle. Yeah, and this is just a you know this is a, a very typical uh, fixed pitch propeller. It's it's the one you guys will actually be working with. Uh, it's kind of like that. You can see it right there. Station thirty four point two. That's thirty four point two inches out. And so the manufacturer may tell you things like that, like measure it at station 34.2 or something. It doesn't always have to be at an exact inch. And some of the ways that you can measure angle, this is my least favorite, is one of these uh, protractors right here where you have, but it's really hard to kind of match it up exactly. It's easier to use a propeller protractor, which is a, a bubble level, a very, very accurate bubble level. Uh, I did have one other picture, where did it go? There it is, which I think is the same photo we looked at before, just not cropped quite as much. Hey, and guess what people are doing over here? I can see a uh, piston stop and there were tiny mags over here. Let me see. Uh -oh. All right, so we got that. Get rid of my Google photos off my phone here. Let's see if there's anything else worth. Could have done that before we started. Okay, so back to this now that we're recording. There we go. Okay, so RPM for sections is the same. That's where we left off. RPM is the same. So the gradual change, the gradual change. Gradual change in blade sections is called pitch distribution. Pitch distribution. And that, I'll put that down here. This is the noticeable change. This, this is the notable change, change. Um, notice, I don't wanna say change. I wanna say noticeable twist in blades. We'll say that, noticeable twist in blades. Am I good to go up that far? Should be, there we go. All right, let's talk about thrust. Cause that's what we want. So let me see. Well, let's just go with what I got here. According, A C C O R D. according to the Q and A, <laughs> you know when I preface it with, with my sources on there, sometimes I don't always agree with it. Thrust is produced. Thrust is produced. Pro, oopsie, produced by a rotating propeller. By a rotating. I'm going to abbreviate that prop. I'm going to stop writing propeller. Rotating prop in the same way in the same way lift is produced by a wing in the same way lift is produced produced by a wing by a wing which is to say an area Area, area of, come on, pan, of decreased pressure area of decreased pressure is produced is produced immediately in front of the propeller. 
immediately. And that is not the face, that is the back. So immediately in front of the prop, which is also called the back. <clears throat> so accordingly with this theory then, aerodynamic forces aerodynamic forces cause the prop to move into the low uh, pressure area. So aerodynamic forces cause the prop cause the prop to move, move into this low pressure area, into this low pressure area. Low pressure area. <clears throat> All right, so there's, there's where the Q and A kind of leaves it, leaves it behind. I'm gonna add this. So then some textbooks, Some textbooks add Newton's third law, which is for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction and the two are, dire are directed along the same straight line. <clears throat> I don't know about all that. I like Newton's cookies. I think, he got, I think the guy was a good cook. So Newton's third law for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction equal and opposite opposite reaction so what do we have action one Action one. So what am I, so if we're gonna throw in Newton's third law, we have to add the action and the reaction. So my action is um, acceleration. Acceleration of a mass of air, of air by the blade. by the blade toward the rear of the airplane. So is there really a bunch of air thrown backwards by the blade towards the rear of the airplane? Well, if you've ever walked behind an airplane with the propeller spinning anything out of idle, you will know that absolutely and positively there is a lot of air being pushed backwards. Enough that'll blow you right off your shoes if you're not careful. So um, I have here a note that we can just pretend. So we could put assume, assume uh, 200 pounds, LBS pounds of accelerated air mass, of accelerated, accelerated air mass. And then, so we could put what is it, action one. I could, so you could say action two is what I wrote. Maybe it would be better call it reaction. So if the action is the acceleration of massive air by the blade thrown to the rear of the airplane, and I'm saying, hey, let's just pretend for a minute that that's 200 pounds of air was actually accelerated backwards, then what is my reaction? Well, the reaction is the plane is pulled forward. The plane, plane is pulled forward. with 200 pounds, 200 pounds of pulling force. So there's my action and reaction. So how does, an air, how does a propeller blade work? Well, we're gonna say two things. Uh, first I put according to Q and A. So again, I put that to remind you that you're probably going to see a Q and A question that says exactly how does a propeller work? And according to the Q and A, 
It is the thrust is produced by a rotating prop in the same way a lift is produced by a wing with an area of low pressure in front of the propeller created by the camber of the prop, much like the top of a wing rotating, the air is accelerated, it creates a low pressure, that low pressure moves the aircraft into the low pressure zone, which is then moving forward. Um, however, I think that it would be a huge mistake to leave it at that and say, well, there's how a wing works or a, a prop works. I mean, we have to throw in Newton's third law that says that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. The reaction is it's pushing, taking air and thrusting it backwards. And again, we used our example of 200 pounds of air accelerated backwards, which means the propeller has got to go forward with 200 pounds of equal and opposite force going the other way. So there is what we're looking for in this whole thrust thing. Everybody's looking good. You know, summer's here. Let's switch from the tea to the basic water. Uh, let's see, I don't see SpongeBob today. You mean the Jameson to the Tito's vodka? What's that? Janet's not here today, I take it? She is. She just messaged you on the chat saying, I Oh, there she is. I hear a puppy. Well, I, I just, I see the thumbs up. Thank you for letting me, oh, so this means she's probably out at a drive through right now getting food for the family. Possibly. A mother's work is never finished. <laughs> she said no. Okay, blade angle. Blade angle. Uh, by the way, uh, who was it who told me today that, that one of the, uh, um, the videos were locked down? Who was that? Nobody's going to fess up to it. Locked down? Yeah. Uh, you couldn't get into the videos. Who was that? Janet said it was her. Who was it? It was Janet? Janet. Oh, I told you that. Well, see, I told you yesterday. I don't have... I have to change this here. Good. It's probably practicing social distancing. I know. There you go. I put it in there, J-Rod. Okay, so thank you. So if you guys run into problems with some of the videos, uh, some weird setting got tripped in some of them that you had to have a password to get in. So hopefully they're all straightened out. I'm also uploading more of them to uh, the YouTube. All right. Let's talk about blade angle. Blade angle, by definition, by definition, definition, the angle between the cord line, the angle between the cord line. Remember, the cord line is that angle that runs uh, from the leading edge to the trailing edge. If I'm going to put this often, often the face because it's face is often very flat on the back so it's often you can often just reference the face back there but not always uh, so it's often the face of a particular of a waiting for the pen of a particular blade section and the plane of rotation Um, yeah, we can leave it at that. Okay, so a little bit ago we talked about angle of attack. And always remember that angle of attack is the cord line, or often the face, and the relative wind, all right? But now we're gonna talk about what is just the blade angle, and it is, uh, in this definition, it is the same, same thing, the cord line, but instead of the relative wind, it's the plane of rotation. So let me show you what I'm talking about when I say that. So here we have, and we're looking at a four bladed propeller. So we have one blade here that's, we're looking right down the, the end of it. Um, we have two blades going up and down. Don't look at that one. All right, and 
So while the definition is the plane of rotation, you can see the plane of rotation is this. You can also take that definition and, and change it around a little bit if it works better in your own head. This just is maddening, maddening, I tell you. All right, so here we have the, the right here is the, uh, the blade angle. Um, how else could we do it? In another way, it is also, we have the longitudinal axis or even going back to that picture I showed you before where it was taken the hub, taken off the flat side of the hub, the difference between the flat side of the hub and this right here, we also get an angle right here. Well, it's not exactly the, the right angle, but it's going to give you um, a different angle, but you can mathematically then extrapolate that out because it's just 90 degrees off from this line here. So um, how do I want to a lot of people have a problem with this, this angle between the, the plane of rotation and the blade angle. But I think that if we could remove the words plane of rotation necessarily, I mean, it's absolutely true, but at the same time, and it might make it worse, it's 90 degrees to this line right here, which just runs through the, um, the crankshaft center line, which is a longitudinal axis. So. Um, hopefully you can pick that up without me confusing it, or I could just leave it the way it was and say, Hey, it's the plane of rotation, figure it out. But I don't want to do that. So, uh, but that is my, my blade angle. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about pitch. And I want to tell you that the true definition of where this blade is setting right here is in fact blade angle. And a lot of times everybody and, and me included, and I'm going to even do it in this class. I'm almost apologetic about it is we change pitch for blade angle. And those are really two different things. So uh, I am more of the school of thought where I don't like to correct people if we can all understand what somebody's saying. So when it comes to the term blade angle and pitch, they're really two different things. But if you listen to somebody speak in the context of what they're talking about and they mistake blade angle and use it in pitch, but they use it in a context, which means blade angle, I will never correct you. I will just let you keep going and I'll think you understand. Uh, because when you get out in the field, it's way mechanics talk. So it's not really my job to correct the world. Uh, my job is more to teach you how to live in the world. And so we use pitch. Uh, synonymously with blade angle, even though pitch is something completely different, which I'll show you. Um, the nice thing is you can't, when you talk about pitch, you don't really get confused out with blade angle. It's funny how it works that way. So, but anyway, I want you to get blade angle. So that is blade angle. And um, if the, we're going to talk about the difference between, and this is where it really comes in. I'll say high pitch and low pitch. And that's, that's where we start uh, we get into constant speed props a lot. We're going to talk about that. Well, it's in high pitch or low pitch. And um, what I really mean and what everybody means is high blade angle and low blade angle because we're talking about the rotation. This blade is actually going to rotate on a, on a um, constant speed propeller. So um, the, the extremes are high pitch feather and in feather, this right here is going to roll down to here and be right there. So the chord line goes this way. That is feather. And then we would say feather or high pitch. And then if this rotated this way and the blade was going straight up and down, we would say that's low pitch. And you can see that's really the wrong thing to say, right? So if I bring the blade up and the blade is going up and down, this is not low pitch. That's low blade angle. And if I, the, the blade is going this way, which is also feather, that is not a high blade angle, although we would say it's high pitch all the way to feather. So that's where it's, it gets mixed up. As long as you can follow that, because when we talk constant speeds, that's how we speak about them. We say high pitch, low pitch. That's how pilots talk about it. So I'm not gonna correct anybody and say, no, you can't do that. Steven, did you raise your hand, buddy? Yeah, yeah. So I was wanting to know when like, I hear it all the time, especially around my, like, people talk about my dad's playing. They say, oh, it's a variable pitch prop. 
and like my me i have like a constant speed well but that doesn't make any sense because constant speed in, is in that variable pitch like, okay oh, yeah i can see where you're messed up you on your airplane you have a fixed pitch propeller yeah. your dad has a constant speed slash variable pitch prop so they're the same thing or are they constant yes constant speed or variable pitch prop are the exact same thing Okay, but we don't call them a variable pitch. We call them constant speed props. Okay. So we have constant speed, we have adjustable, and we have uh, fixed. We're going to get into all that, but I'm glad you brought it up. So, okay, so blade angle. Uh, hopefully everybody's got blade angle. You, you got to get that because we're going to talk so much about blade angles. And I'm going to, as I said, end up calling it pitch when it's not pitch, but uh, that's the way it's going to be. Um, so a low blade angle would be high pitch. No. So, um, well, okay, let's go back to that before I just say no. Then that's where it gets confusing, and I always want to make sure we're all talking the same thing. So if the propeller, and I'll, I'll use different colors this time. So if the propeller rotated, and it does, and it rotates to this plane right here, okay, then this is my angle right here, right? And that angle would be 90 degrees, 90 degrees. And then if it went the other way, let me use a different color. And if it rotated up and was facing this way, then the angle would be zero degrees, right? So in the blue, I would have low pitch, which is the wrong word, slash, low blade angle. All right, and then I'll switch back to red. And in the red, what I'm looking at right here, I would see it's often, well, it's actually technically, if it's all the way in that 90 degree, it's in the feather position. That's called feather. And the reason why um, it's called that, I don't know what it's called that actually, but what that means is there is no thrust. You can't run a propeller like this, uh, it's just, coming around and smacking the air like your hand sticking straight out of the car window and you're going 60 miles an hour flat in the wind. It doesn't work. You go into feather when the engine has failed and you shut it down. So if this engine had a problem and you shut it down in flight, you go to feather because the wind is coming this way and it does not rotate the propeller. You don't want a prop rotating if you've got an engine shut down on a twin engine aircraft. It just creates too much drag. We're going to get into that. But it's called the feather position and that's the extreme end of it. So in feather, so sometimes when I'm worried that you guys aren't picking up where the prop is, I'll say in feather or towards feather. And so you can get that idea that it's going all the way out here. That's ridiculous. You can't, you can't even start. Um, and we'll talk about that. You'd have a really hard time starting a piston engine aircraft in a feather position. Unlike um, like a King Air or something with a turboprop, you do start it in a feather position, but you can't do that with a piston engine. It's really hard on the starter. Sometimes you have to, they don't like it. Okay, so feather slash high pitch. Hey, Kevin. Yeah. When do you use a uh, low pitch? Um, low pitch is used for starting and takeoff. And then once, you've take, once you're off and flying, then you'll start increasing your pitch. You'll start pulling back your manifold pressure and increasing the pitch. Okay, so remember, that's feather high pitch. Remember, high pitch is the wrong word. I'm, I'm using it incorrectly. It's just the way it is in the field, but it's really a high blade angle. So those are, those are the words that we're using. And just like I said up here, technically, low pitch is the wrong word because pitch is a reference to, um, uh, well, I'm gonna show you what pitch is. Pitch is actually the twist of the blade. Like in that photo we saw in the beginning of this? Like that photo, <laughs> there's pitch. <laughs> oh shit, okay. Pitch references that and it references this. And we're gonna come back around to that in just a second. And then I'm going to do this, and then that's just going to go. What? Why you hate me? So we'll have to save that from when you're you're ready to hate me. But it's really not that bad. Okay, so I'm going to get out of this, 
going to lose my annotations and say blade angles. Now, everybody knows what a blade angle is. So, all right, but I'm going to put this one here. F, okay. To create, to create, create thrust, come on, a blade, a blade must be set, must be set at a certain angle, set at a certain angle, angle to the plane of rotation, to the plane All right, great thrust blade must be set at a certain angle to the plane of rotation. And we go back to the picture that I showed you in, in lab. You could see that the blade angle moved significantly throughout the, uh, throughout the prop. I was looking for those photos. Here we go, back to this one. So you can see that's the blade angle. It changes a lot on this little um, prop right there, so. All right. Um, There's something that I don't understand, Ken. What's that? There's something that I don't understand. Yeah. When, you, when you're doing your pitch, uh, basically you're pitching on the uh, thickest and widest part of the prop, or okay. So let's go not. back. Let's go back to this. You're talking about this one, right? Yeah. Okay. So let's let's remember that what we're looking at here is not pitch. This is blade angle. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, the blade angle really should be done from this point right here on the leading edge to this point on the trailing edge. And honestly, if you were to take this propeller and turn it upside down, because down here is the face and up here is the back, this is the rounded part up here, you could in fact set the uh, protractor, let me see, do I have a protractor? I know I got a protractor picture. You guys aren't familiar with what the prop protractor looks like. And it'd be helpful to look at one. Hello, do I not have one? Not in this one. Let me see. So you could set the, the prop protractor down here. It would actually work fine. But these make it really nice so you can get the prop protractor up here. And so the line that is formed from the leading, the leading edge to the trailing edge, which would be trailing edge to leading edge, leading edge to trailing edge, this line that's formed out there is simulated right here or it's not even simulated, it's just, it's reproduced exactly up there. Yeah, I, I understand that. What okay. I'm saying is where, when you, when you have a propeller that where you can change the pitch. Oh yeah, okay. Where is the pitch basically center line, I would say. Oh, where would you measure it from? Yeah. 75% uh, station. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was a good question. You're thinking, oh yeah, all this, which one counts? It's usually the 75% station. That's just standard. They say, okay, what is 75% of between here and there? What is that number? Bam, there's your, there's your pitch. Uh, let me see what that was. Let's open up that PowerPoint, see if it'll let me. Uh, okay, I'm going to move over. You guys good? I can't see you, so. Yep, yep. Yep, yep, okay. I got too much stuff open in my... Um, let's see the slideshow from current slide. This is a, a prop protractor. Um, I don't have one with me. We have several of them in, in the lab, but I didn't bring one with me. And they're at first glance, really kind of weird to use, but they're really cool and very accurate. And it's kind of hard to, I'll get to explaining it at a different point probably, but even more so. But what you do is um, this whole disc, can, it separates and rotates away from these squared edges. So right now it looks like, okay, you could use it on a flat table. And if you laid this edge on a flat table, then this, of course, the bubble would be centered. But what if the table had just a little bit of a, um, it wasn't, it wasn't level. Well, just like if you were using it on an airplane over here is kind of what this represents. 
well, that's not going to do you any good to put this end of the protractor against this end of the blade and get it because the whole thing is askew. Well, you actually take this edge right here and lay it against the prop shaft, or you could use this edge here and lay it against here. And then you rotate this dial until it's square. I know, it's, it, unless you're there, uh, you really can't. I'll probably have to sneak in and grab one and really give you guys a demo with this or something. But um, it's a prop projector. And I'm sorry, I can't really explain it. It's not even worth trying to explain it with pictures and, and words. You just have to see it in action, I think. But uh, back to where we were. I was at point G, as in G whiz. G, uh, while rotating in flight, while rotating, while rotating in flight, each section of the blade, each section of the blade, the blade has a motion has a motion that combines that combines the forward movement the forward movement of the airplane forward movement of the airplane the airplane with the rotary motion, with the rotary motion of the prop. Okay, and this is where it gets kind of weird. You guys are going to pick it up easy. I know you are because one nice thing about being online like this is I don't feel like we're so rushed. All right, so just keep that in mind. We're gonna put a pin in it. There's a pin, pin right there in it. All right, uh, the blade, the blade has a path, has a path through the air. Through the air, like a corkscrew or just a regular screw. Through the air, like like a corkscrew, it's a corkscrew, or just a regular screw, a PK screw, if you will. Screw. And now pull up this slide, which is what we were talking about, and there we go. So the the blade has um, a path that is both forward traveling and spiraling like a screw. And where I'm going to go with this eventually, just so you kind of get the idea, but it's fine. All you have to do is understand this right here. And I think the picture just describes it well. And you go, hey, I get that. Yeah, of course it is. The airplane, here it is. It's moving forward. And as that blade, it's going to go around and just take a bite out of the air. And it's just going to come forward. And, and uh, in fact, at one point, they called it an air screw. Um, and on, um, on ships, they actually just call it a screw. It's really uh, not a propeller. The proper term is a screw. And so that's what we got going on there. So that's not a big deal, right? So we got that going on, so or screw. So the amount of bite, I'm gonna sub points here, the amount of bite, the amount, the amount of, I'll put this in parentheses, bite, bite. Say, so, cause we say it takes a bite out of air. The amount of bite the blade takes, the blade, the blade takes is determined by the blade angle is determined determined by the blade angle and if we go back a slide and we're looking at the one where I drew the red and the lines well, I'll go back a slide and I'll show you real quick go back to this one that would make sense, right? If the prop is in the position it's in right now, it's gonna take bite A. 
Well, if I bring it back up more towards the zero degree angle, well, that's less of a bite, right? And so uh, we have less of a bite. If I bring it down a little bit more, it's gonna be more of a bite. If I bring it all the way down to 90, you kind of go, what kind of bite is that? Well, I wouldn't go with that. That just screws things up in your own head. But if it's somewhere over here, that's more of a bite. So more of a bite, less of a bite. And that has a, a major function to what's going on. So we, and then we can take what we just said right there. We could say, well, a high pitch, high, high pitch, high pitch, which is towards feather. See how I can say that? So it helps you out. Equals a big bite, big bite. And of course, then we could say then a low pitch, a low pitch, which goes more towards that zero angle equals a little bite. All right, so hopefully everybody's following along so far. So the bigger or the higher the blade angle, the bigger the bite. That is correct, to a point. Now, if you get up to 90 and beyond, then that's different. Then it goes backwards the other way. You don't want that. So yeah, you can only go, go so far with that. So we could almost say, well, 89 degrees would be the most you could get, and that would be horribly inefficient. Sounds cool. Okay, well, as long as it sounds cool. Wait for everybody to get caught up. Janet, you caught up? She says yes. Excellent. Here we go. <laughs> All right. So due, due to pitch distribution. Remember, pitch distribution is the picture. Come on, mouse work. Here's pitch distribution, pitch distribution. That's that change in angle going down the prop due to pitch distribution, something. Um, and which is really blade twist, but I'll put that and blade twist, blade twist, blade twist. The blade angle, the blade angle at one station, at one station is usually different, is usually different, different from a blade angle at another station is usually different than the blade angle at a different station, which is nothing new there. We've been talking about that all along here, that we have the pitch distribution and the twisting and the different angles. And it seems really weird right now. You know, what the heck is going on with that? All right, so how important is this whole blade angle thing? You know, we, we look at one and we go, well, you know, why didn't they make it more? Why do they make it less? What, what's going on there? Uh, I wanna throw this out there so you can have an understanding of the importance of blade angle. So blade angle, blade angle has a pronounced, blade angle has a pronounced, has a pronounced effect, effect, on the mass of air, the mass of air moved as well as engine RPM, that amount of air moved as well as, as well as RPM. Oops, I'm gonna say engine RPM, engine RPM. So you understand exactly what I'm saying. Okay, so this is a point that's, that I, I need everybody to, to understand. Um, and that is, I've talked about static RPM checks on aircraft. All right, and if you remember, a static RPM check on an aircraft is when I start the aircraft up and I warm it up and I keep the brakes locked and I do not let 
I don't let the airplane move at all. And this is with a fixed pitch propeller. And with that fixed pitch propeller, I go full wide open throttle. And with it sitting there at wide open throttle, I'm gonna look over and I'm gonna look at the, R the tachometer, the RPM gauge, and I'm going to uh, see what that is. Let me see, do I have? And then that's gonna give me a number. And then based upon that number, I'm gonna cross-reference that with the type certificate data sheet. I should pull up a type certificate data sheet if I have one here. Uh, let me see if I can find one real quick. Um, I don't think I wanna go there, let's see. No. Um, I think I showed you one in 310, right? Oops, let me go back one. Oh, the decometer? Um, no, type certificate data sheet. No. Um, oh, no, I would need. Bear with me, because it's worth it. Let me see. Um, certificate data sheet. See, I'm pulling up here. There we go. Good old Google. Uh, okay, so I'm going to see. So I pulled up a TCDS for a Cessna 150 type certificate data sheet. And here we go. I mean, this is just, this is the very beginning. I'm going to come right down and this is great information. So the model 150, 150A, 150 Bravo, 150 Charla, Charlie, uh, for this particular aircraft, it was certified with a Continental O200 engine. And right here, very first page, very first thing, they gave me propeller and propeller limits. So if you own this particular aircraft, um, Steve, which one do you have? 150 what? 150J model. J, well, I have to scroll down to get to the J. I'm not gonna do that. Okay, so I have a choice of three propellers. I could have the Sensnich 69CK, the Macaulay, that one, or this Macaulay. That is it. I have no other props. So by according to the type certificate data sheet, I must have one of these props installed. And let's just say I have the Sensnich 69CK. Tells me right there the diameter must not be over 69 inches, not under 67.5. However, right here is what I'm talking about. Static RPM maximum permissible throttle setting. It cannot be over 202470 or not under 2320. So I have my static RPM check. It means I have my brakes on, the aircraft is not moving, that's very important, and I look at my tachometer, it must fall between those two limits. If it is under 2320, it means one of two things. Either the engine is going bad and not producing proper horsepower, or I have the wrong proper pitch to it. If it is over 240, 2470, it can mean only one of two things. One, I have the wrong proper pitch on it, or two, the engine is producing way over maximum horsepower, which is not likely, so let's go back to the view. It's the wrong prop. So, all right, so we have this. Let's just assume that the engine is producing the proper horsepower, all right? Notice right here, that's my RPM. In flight, I can get that out of the aircraft, by the way, but, um, and you'll know why in a little while. Um, it's just the way the angle of the air hits the prop when you're actually rolling. And that's why I say it's so important that you're not moving to get these numbers right here. So let's just make the assumption that the, we know the engine is good. And so um, I do a static RPM check and I get 24, let's make it easy, 2,500. Okay, so if I get 2,500 out of this prop, it tells me that the pitch is not enough. It's too flat. It's too close to the zero RPM, or it's not zero RPM, the zero pitch angle, all right? And the other is true. If I know that the engine is putting it, producing the 100 horsepower and I get under 2320, it tells me somebody's put too much pitch in that propeller. And you can actually repitch these uh, metal propellers. It's really interesting to watch. Uh, and 
Um, it's it's an art form, absolute art form. It is crazy to to it, to watch somebody do it. it. You'd think they put it in a machine that's very accurate. They just shove it in this giant hydraulic machine with a bunch of wood blocks, and you hear all the wood crunching and smashing as this machine grabs it. And it grabs it by the hub, and it grabs it by the blade, and some guy with a cigarette in one hand and a, and a bar in the other, he just kind of pulls on it until you see this, puts, uh, he just watches it twist the whole blade, and then he lets go, and it relaxes, and he measures it, and he goes, ah, that'll work. You know, I'm like, whoa. Uh, in fact, it's funny, I went to a seminar, and this prop company put on a, a, um, a presentation, and they said they won't even do this anymore. Uh, and the simple reason why is they said because economically speaking, they have to use their highest skilled person who is making the most money per hour to do the job that makes the least amount of money. So they said, so we don't even do it. It's not economically feasible unless you want to pay us commensurate to that guy's salary to pitch your prop. And trust me, it's not worth it to repitch a little tiny 150 prop for you. I thought that was interesting. But anyway. Static RPM, right? Or so when I talk about the static RPM check, you've got to understand this is what I'm talking about. That it's this in the chocks thing. And this is what you're doing when you do an annual inspection. You're checking one of you're checking two things. If it meets these requirements and you have this proper prop on there, then you know you're producing the right horsepower. And that's that's the intent. Um, the second intent is, and it's probably less of the intent, is that you assume you're making the right horsepower and you're checking to see if the right prop is on there. Is, uh, that's what's up with that. Hey, Kevin. Yeah. What's up with the inch and a half difference in the diameter? Oh, okay. So you are allowed. Um, so you, you get a rock chip, you hit the tip of a prop, and rather than throwing away the whole prop, they cut a little bit off the tip. Now you gotta oh. do it to both sides. So they'll cut off a little bit of each size, each side and bring it down. So it starts out as a 69 inch prop. And by the way, the, the reason why it can't be over that is because of ground clearance rules and laws in the FARs. So based upon the way the landing gear is, is uh, preset on the aircraft. So it starts out at 69, can't be more than that. We have ground clearance problems. You hit your prop, get a nick, do something, they have to shorten it. They can shorten it to 67.5, but at the same time, just by shortening it, you're probably going to go over your RPM, so it has to be repitched. What about like when you file down uh, like stuff on the leading edge of the propeller? Well, that's different, and that doesn't. That those are different dimensions. Yeah, it's just not given in the type certificate. The type certificate doesn't tell you everything. I mean, you know, if you yeah. have a type certificate. You know, it's got CG range, uh, maximum weight, where the seats are located, your baggage, fuel, oil capacity, control surface movements, and serial numbers. Boom, I'm done. That was it. I, you know, some people think, well, you know, the, you know what kind of, they're, they're astounded. You know, it's like, oh, look at the type certificate. No, look at, that's the entire type certificate, sort of, for the model 150C. All right, now you can't say you're done there. You gotta scroll down until it says, uh, data pertinent to all models, which is always down at the end. Uh, there you go. Then you have to read the rest of it. Where's the datum, certification basis, production basis. Um, and then there we go. Um, and then your notes. And the notes um, are where you find all of your placards. So note two has all the placards that have to be put on the aircraft. Um, let's see. Let's see, a lot of notes, a lot of placards, placard, placard, placard more placards, more placards. All right, then we get down to our other, other notes, Just note three, nothing. Um, airspeed, indic um, airspeed information. So there's just not five, back to more placards, um, and what electrical system. So you can see there's really not a whole lot in this type certificate data sheet, which is kind of funny. Some people think there's more to it. There's actually more to the old car versions when it is under civil air regulations. I like them better. They actually have more information. Oh, okay, um, 520, which means yep. you get a break and I get a break. <laughs>